In the annals of rock history, few supergroups are as fascinating or as fleeting as the Dirty Mac. This one-off ensemble was formed for the Rolling Stones' 1968 TV special, The Rolling Stones' Rock and Roll Circus. Composed of John Lennon, Eric Clapton, Keith Richards, and Mitch Mitchell, the Dirty Mac brought together some of the most iconic figures in rock music for a brief, unforgettable moment. Although their time together was short, their impact was profound, leaving a lasting impression on the music world. The Dirty Mac was born out of the Rolling Stones' desire to create a unique and memorable musical experience for their TV special. The idea was to bring together a group of legendary musicians who had never played together before. John Lennon, still in the throes of Beatlemania, was eager to step outside his usual musical confines and explore a different sound. To round out the band, he enlisted Eric Clapton, the brilliant guitarist who had recently left Cream, Keith Richards, the Rolling Stones rhythm guitarist and co-founder, and Mitch Mitchell, the drummer for the Jimi Hendrix Experience. This combination of talent promised something truly special. Each member brought their unique style and expertise to the table. Lennon's raw vocal power and sharp wit, Clapton's blues-infused guitar virtuosity, Richard's distinctive riff-driven rhythm guitar, and Mitchell's jazz-inspired drumming prowess. The Dirty Mac performed only once, during a taping of the Rolling Stones' Rock and Roll Circus in December 1968. The group played the Beatles' classic Year Blues, with Lennon taking the lead vocals. Their rendition was raw, passionate, and electrifying, a stark contrast to the polished studio version on the White Album. It was a performance that captured the essence of rock and roll in its purest form, unfiltered, emotional, and alive. In addition to Year Blues, the Dirty Mac also played a loose, experimental piece called Whole Lotta Yoko, featuring Yoko Ono on vocals and violinist Ivory Gitlis. The performance was avant-garde and divisive, highlighting the improvisational spirit of the late 60s rock scene. It remains a vivid snapshot of the era's creativity and boundary-pushing artistry. Though the Dirty Mac existed for just one night, their performance has endured as a powerful testament to the musical prowess of its members. The collaboration marked one of the few times Lennon performed live without his Beatles bandmates, and provided a rare glimpse into the synergy between four of rock's greatest talents. For Clapton, it was an opportunity to play alongside one of his musical heroes, John Lennon, while Richards enjoyed stepping outside his regular role with the Rolling Stones. Mitchell, meanwhile, added his complex, jazz-influenced style to a band of rock heavyweights, further showcasing his versatility. The Rock and Roll Circus TV special was shelved for decades and was not officially released until 1996, enhancing the Dirty Max mystique. When it finally emerged, it offered rock enthusiasts a chance to witness this extraordinary collaboration, cementing the group's place in music history. Despite their brief existence, the Dirty Max serves as a fascinating footnote in the history of rock. They embodied the spirit of experimentation and collaboration that defined the late 1960s, a period when genre boundaries were being challenged and musical legends were finding new ways to express themselves. Their performance remains a unique moment when rock icons came together to create something spontaneous, powerful, and unrepeatable. Ultimately, the Dirty Mac was more than just a supergroup. It was a confluence of some of the greatest musical minds of a generation, coming together for a single, magical moment that continues to resonate with fans today.